Hey everyone. We just have another minute before seven o'clock, but I wanted to hop on here a little early just to make sure everything's working. I see some people joining us. Yay. Tracy, Catherine, Jenna, Mel. Nice to see you guys. Thanks for coming. Awesome, Quincy, hello. You guys are great. Hello. <laughs> so this is my first Instagram Live, so I'll ask you to bear with me. Tracy, hello, hello. So nice for everyone to join. So this is a new initiative for us for 2022. We're gonna be coming to you live every Monday with fun tips and recipes. We're just gonna have a lot of fun in the kitchen. So if you don't know me yet, I'm Linda Turner. I'm the founder of Fomagerie Zangari and I'm coming to you today from my kitchen at home. This is where the whole thing started. So this is where we started making cashew cheese. We were here for about two years before we moved into our production facility. And I'll show you my Vitamix back here. This is the one Vitamix. It was a reconditioned Vitamix that I bought and uh, it still works. It's, I use it almost every week, I'd say. It's a perfect tool. So if you stick with us until the end of the live, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna tell you how you could win yourself a Vitamix of your very own. It's a great tool. Hey everyone. Fraser, nice to see you. So the topic for today is uh, dairy swaps. So I am uh, no expert on these things except for the cheese part. So we'll spend quite a bit of time talking about cheeses, but I wanted to start talking about some of these products that I use as dairy replacements on a regular basis. Um, when I transitioned to a plant-based diet in 2020, the options for plant-based foods and uh, in the grocery store were not that great, especially where I live in a small town. So I'm in Alexandria, Ontario, in case you don't know where that is. It's a very small town, halfway between Montreal and Ottawa. So we're about an hour from Montreal, an hour from Ottawa, so if you're in one of those cities, you can take an hour long drive, come and visit us at our cheese shop. We're open Monday to Friday, nine to four, and we're also open on Saturdays from 10 to two. Lots of fun things going on in the shop. New things, we have new products, new Canadian plant-based products that we've brought in from across the country from some amazing women-owned businesses like Eve's Crackers, Oh My Yummies, provisions jellies from Niagara, lots of fun things you can use to curate your own cheese boards. But on that topic, let's just switch back to uh, talking about our dairy swaps. So I'm gonna start with milks and butters because I think we use those pretty much every day and I have my personal favorites. I'm a big fan of the Tetra Pak because you can keep it in your cupboard and it doesn't have to be refrigerated until you open it. So Almond Breeze is a product that I've been using for a really long time. We always get the unsweetened one. This one is vanilla because my boyfriend likes to have it on his cereal in the morning. My personal favorite is the Earth Zone Barista Blend Oat Milk. It's nice and thick and creamy and I just love the idea of adding the oat milk because it's almost like I'm adding oatmeal to my smoothies in the morning. And uh, as I said, I could keep it in the cupboard, pull it out, when I need to and I don't need to keep it in the fridge because my fridge is usually packed. I don't know about you guys. You guys have packed fridges? <laughs> I'm glad to hear I'm not the only one. And then as far as butters go, plant-based butters, my personal favorite is the Earth Balance. Been using this one for a really long time. It's got a great thick buttery texture. Um, and then sometimes if I want uh, for something for my toast that's a little softer and easier to spread, I'll use the Bissell 
um, vegan one. You guys use these ones as well? Bissell, anyone? Earth Balance? No fridge space. I hear you. I had to like pile, the, I've got a leaning tower of pizza in there right now. So those are some of my personal favorites as far as milks and butters go. I know there's lots of other options out there. And then yogurts, I'm not an expert on because I don't really eat plant-based yogurt. But my friend Jenna was telling me that her daughter loves coconut yogurt. So I've had the coconut yogurt before. Oh yeah, Quincy likes Earth Balance too. Great, awesome. And then I wanna give a shout out to uh, my friend who makes plant-based ice cream. So if you're looking for a great plant-based ice cream alternative, oat and milk. This one is chocolate peanut butter. It's amazing, it's my favorite. And then obviously I'm a cheese connoisseur because I've been making plant-based cheeses for nine years now. I think we started, it's in 2013, so I think we're, we're at nine years in now. So that's pretty exciting. We have a lot of options on that front. If you're not familiar with our products, we have um, the double cream brie, which is a replacement for a brie style cheese. So if you wanted to make, say, a salad, you can crumble it in there. This one is great warmed up. So I thought I would make tonight this little baked brie. I have this Taltenade de Chocolat au Caramel Salé from um, Trois Fois Par Jour. And I thought I'm gonna just drizzle that over there with some pecans. Pop it in the oven at 350 degrees for about 10, 15 minutes just to warm it up. You can serve it with sliced fruit or crackers or baguette. It's really, really lovely. Also, you can use it um, to make a brie en croute. So you can do the same thing, but just take your puff pastry. So you can buy a vegan puff pastry and you roll it out, put your cheese in the middle, fold your crust all around. You can add some jelly and nuts in there, some maple syrup, all these fun things. And then you fold it up, you follow the directions for the puff pastry and you bake it for about 20 minutes. Excellent. So. I recommend you try that. Quincy, I think you're really gonna like it, but you're gonna have to tell me how you can find gluten-free puff pastry, because I haven't found any of that yet. Then if you're looking for an alternative to cheddar, because cheddar is the most popular cheese in Canada, we all know, we have two options for you. Our ale-aged cheddar. This one is cultured with a local beer, Bo's beer and it's kind of like a pub cheddar style. It's great in soups, on burgers, grilled cheese sandwiches. So this one's really great. I saw someone made a mac and cheese with this one recently this week, I think. Uh, so check that out, it's up on Instagram. And then the other one is the smoky jalapeno. So this one is good if you, if you can't eat gluten because the ale age one with the beer, it has some wheat in it. The smoky jalapeno one, it's not really spicy. It's more smoky than spicy, just a tiny bit of fresh chopped jalapeno peppers. So you can try that one for a mac and cheese. I've linked all the recipes that I'm gonna talk about today in a post on the website, Dairy Swaps, and there's a link in our link tree in, the, in our bio, so you can just click on there. It'll take you right to the article has all the recipes, links to some of these recipes that I'm talking about, like the mac and cheese. So you can go over there and find it. And then we have some spreadable ones as well. So the garlic and fine herbs and the sun-dried tomato basil flavors are a more spreadable boursin style cheese. They're great for bagels, sandwiches. Uh, they're great to make pasta sauces. The sun-dried tomato one I put on pizza all the time top it with some of our um, pesto. Uh, so I highly, highly recommend you pick some of that up, give it a try, and I'm gonna tell you how you can save 20% on our online store. So stay tuned there. So one of the things I wanna ask you guys, and if you have um, some questions for me 
on this topic of dairy swaps, push, pop them in the in the the chat here. Also, I'm looking for ideas for future content. So I want to know what you guys want to see. If you have a aching question, if you have a recipe that you're dying to veganize and you're looking for some help, just let me know. We have 52 weeks of content to come up with, so I'm happy to develop some new recipes for you guys. And next week we'll be talking about budget-friendly meat swaps. So we know that you know there's lots and lots of meat alternatives out there, but there's some really cheap, easy things you can use that doesn't break the bank. So we'll talk about that next week. Um, one of the things we were doing earlier this week is making sour cream. So it's super, super easy. If you have a blender, you're gonna need some kind of blender or food processor. I've always used my Vitamix. It's a great tool. It makes it really creamy. You don't get a grainy texture. So those high-speed blenders, I think Blendtec is another one. I haven't used those before. Let us know if you have a Blendtec or another kind of blender that you prefer to use. But uh, the sour cream I made with the pierogies. Did anyone see that? Posted it uh, yesterday, I think. So the sour cream is great. I'm just gonna grab a spoon. Nice thick texture. We just took it out of the fridge. So very similar to your store-bought sour cream, but I haven't found a store-bought sour cream that I enjoy quite yet. So I always make my own. So you're gonna start off with raw cashews, not roasted or salted. They have to be raw. And then you're gonna to wanna to soak them. So a couple of options. I recommend soaking them for six to eight hours, or you can soak them overnight. It's pretty handy. Just pour some water over them and let them soak. You can even soak them in the fridge if you wanna soak them for longer than six to eight hours. But a little uh, trick that I use to speed up this process is I will pour boiling water over them and then just soak them for about a half hour. So if you're in a hurry, like I usually am, that's a, that's a easier way to, uh, quicker way to do that. So you'd start with one cup of your raw cashews soaked either six to eight hours or half an hour in boiling water. And then you're gonna drain them, rinse them. So I'll just put them in a little colander, run them under the sink. Then I add them to the blender. So one cup of soaked cashews, and then I add half a cup of water. And as I said, these recipes are in the post. The link is in the bio. And then one and a half tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. So there is a world of difference between fresh lemon juice and the lemon juice you buy in the bottle or in those little squeezy lemon things. Always go for your fresh lemon juice. I think it really makes a big difference. If you're gonna splurge on those cashews, which are not cheap, you're gonna wanna use fresh lemon juice. And then a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. Two tablespoons of olive oil. If you want to reduce the fat, you can always put half the olive oil in there instead of the two tablespoons, just the one. And then um, about half a heaping teaspoon of salt, sea salt I usually use. And then you put that in the blender, you blend it up until it's really, really smooth. I put it on high for maybe two minutes in my Vitamix. And then you have your great creamy sour cream that's great for tacos or nachos. You put it on baked potatoes, pierogies, big dollop on your chili. There's tons and tons of ways that you can serve that sour cream. So sour cream is uh, one thing that I recommend you make on your own because I haven't found a nice one yet. If you have, let me know, but this is super easy to do. It'll keep in the fridge for two or three weeks um, and then you can just use it up. So the other thing I wanted to make for you today is uh, my Parmesan. So it's a vegan Parmesan, nut based again, but instead of using cashews, for this one I use ground almonds. 
So you can buy your almonds already ground. You can get it at Bulk Bar. You can get it in the bulk section of your grocery store. So this recipe, you know, I know there's a lot of vegan Parmesans out there, um, but there, it's so easy to make that I can't even imagine why someone would want to, to buy them. So I just start with half a cup of the um, ground almonds. So this is four ingredients in less than 30 seconds, I think it's gonna to take to make it. Two tablespoons of nutritional yeast. So this is just nutritional yeast, plain old nutritional yeast to get at the grocery store. And then a little bit of yellow miso. This gives it a little bit of a salty umami taste. And then about half, a little more than half a teaspoon of sea salt. I put them all in this handy little food processor, food processor that I have. And then I put on the lid. I'm gonna pulse it for maybe 30 seconds. And then you can see, it looks just like Parmesan little sprinkles that you'd get. So you can use that to sprinkle on your spaghetti. So you just sprinkle it on, just like Parmesan. So easy. So I want you guys to try that at home. You can keep it in the fridge, in a mason jar for several months. Uh, it won't go bad. I just keep it in there and I use it on uh, popcorn. Really, really great on popcorn. So you make your popcorn melt some butter, pour it on there, and then sprinkle your Parmesan on there. You're gonna love it. It's great for Caesar salad too, if you wanna put it in Caesar salad, or uh, anywhere you want a little cheesy sprinkle. In a pinch, you can even just use nutritional yeast, sprinkle that on, but the vegan Parmesan is a really nice texture. So one other, um, dairy-free cheese that I use a lot is a vegan ricotta. And I cannot live my life without lasagna. I have discovered that. Anyone else uh, in the same boat? Give me a thumbs up if lasagna is your bag. So, of course you need to have that ricotta layer in your, in your lasagna. So I have a really quick, easy recipe. It's four ingredients again. And it's one package of our garlic and fine herbs cheese. So you just pop that into your food processor. And then you're gonna add juice from half a lemon. I get a lot of thumbs up. You guys are loving lasagna. Awesome. And then uh, one block of extra firm or firm tofu. And I like the Soul Cuisine Sprouted Tofu. My stomach doesn't really like soy products that are not fermented or sprouted. So the sprouted tofu really, really helps me and I don't get that bloated, gassy feeling after eating it. And I should say about the milks is I've heard that soy milk is the closest to, in taste to um, cow's milk. And I know that my friend Mel Bowden's uh, swears by using soy milk in her baked goods and in her grow your roots foods. So if soy doesn't bother you, you can try the soy milk, the soy creamer, all those things. But for me, it just doesn't work. So that's why I stick to almond or oat. So with this dairy-free ricotta, I uh, add the garlic fine herbs, the whole package, the juice from one half a lemon, one block of firm or extra firm tofu, and then some salt, maybe a half to one teaspoon of salt. Sprinkle it all in your food processor and then just pulse it or process it until it's this texture of ricotta cheese. And that'll make a whole lasagna, a whole big lasagna. Uh, usually what I'll do is I'll take the spinach, frozen spinach, frozen chopped spinach, and I'll thaw that out. Oh, Tracy's telling me, soy milk has a higher protein content, which is why it's great for baking. 
there you go. So if soy milk works for you, I know that Mel always uses soy milk in her biscuits and her biscuits aren't the bomb, so try that out. Uh, so the ricotta, I'll take a frozen chopped spinach and I'll thaw it out, squeeze out all the water because it's, there's a lot of water in there. And then I'll add the chopped spinach into this ricotta mixture, mix it around really well. And I'll, then I'll use that to either do my lasagna roll ups or my lasagna. And uh, it turns out perfect every single time. So again, you can find the recipe for our vegan lasagna on our website. There's also skillet lasagna, which is easy because it's super fast and you don't have to bake it for an hour. So try that out. I think we have a lasagna soup recipe as well that can be made in the Instant Pot, if I'm not mistaken. And then there's a great recipe for lasagna roll-ups with a pumpkin bechamel sauce. And that one is super, super good. So then one more thing I wanted to talk about today before we go and take some questions from uh, you guys is cashew cream. So one of my uh, favorite things to do is just to make a little bit of cashew cream and I keep it in my fridge in, in a mason jar, obviously. I have a lot of mason jars in there. And all it is is equal parts of cashews soaked for six to eight hours or use my boiling water trick um, equal parts of soaked cashews and water, and then add a little bit of salt in there. And that is great for soups, creamy soups, like if you wanna make a chowder or a bisque, or if you wanted to add this to tomato sauce to make a rosé, it's uh, super easy. It'll last maybe a week in the fridge. I'll put it on top of my pasta. Um, there's so many great recipes that you can use that cashew cream for. I've never tried freezing it, but I imagine you can freeze it too if you wanted to keep it longer than a week. So um, you can try some of those things. Does anyone else have some? Oh yes, cashew cream, so yummy. It is, and it's so versatile. I could use it in my, uh, it to make like a clam chowder, we call it a glam chowder. So we use shiitake mushrooms instead of clams and you use the cashew cream to really thicken it at the end. It's really, really good. My favorite recipe is by Isa Chandra Moskowitz. So I think it's in her Isa Does It cookbook. It's a great glam chowder recipe. Yep, for pasta sauce, it's great. So I'm not sure if you guys had any questions. If you have some questions, just pop them in the chat here. Please, yes, Dragon Bunny. You can get all of these recipes. The post is on our website. There's a link in the bio, so check that out. All the recipes are there. We also have a brand new cookbook out with Good Food for Good and Gogo Quinoa. If you haven't downloaded that yet, you're gonna wanna download that. Um, it's got 31 recipes, all plant-based from the three different companies. And there's also a code that you get when you download that. I think it's 20% um, off all of our cheeses online until the end of January. And if you want to use the code VEGANUARY20, all caps, VEGANUARY20, you can use that code to get 20% off all of our cheeses and pestos until the end of January. So check that out. And then I promise to tell you about our Vitamix giveaway. So let me just check if there's any questions that popped up here. You guys know everything. Awesome. Good. Uh, so if you want to win your very own Vitamix, aw, <laughs> Leanne, thank you. You're a sweetheart. Um, you can, enter our contest we're giving away a free vitamix blender beginning the 21st of january on instagram so you'll be able to go enter as many times as you want and tell all your friends to enter and you have a chance did you know that it's the 100th anniversary of vitamix this year can you believe they've been around since 1922 who knows who knew it's pretty exciting, so they know what they're doing. Um, yeah, so our next live is gonna be next Monday, same time, same place. 
we'll get together and uh, we'll be talking about meat alternatives that don't break the bank. And please continue to give me your questions, to um, add into your ideas of content that you'd like to see, if there's something that you think would be really fun. I know we're planning a really fun brunch cook-off with Mel Bowden's of Grow Your Roots in a few weeks. So stay tuned for that one. And then I think we have another one coming up with my friend Candice from Oatmeal Ice Cream. She's challenged me to make a recipe with her ice cream. Oh, someone else loves their Vitamix. <laughs> awesome. Good, okay, well, I hope you found this information useful. Again, you can go and find all those recipes. I talked about the sour cream, the cashew cream, the ricotta recipe, and the super simple four ingredient Parmesan recipe that you can find and make for yourselves. So I wanna see all of your creations. Make sure you tag us at Zengari Veg or at Zengari Kitchen. And if you haven't yet followed our Zengari Kitchen account, you can go and do that. We have some unique content that is not cheese specific over there. So we'll be uh, making some more recipes and have, we always have our guest chef of the month that gives us great tips and recipes. A couple of weeks ago, we had Quincy who's on here now and we had Jarena Burton, a cookbook author. So uh, we have some great content <laughs> and yep, someone wants to try the popcorn. It's good. It's really, really good. So try that and let me know how you like it. Thanks everyone. We'll see you next Monday at seven o'clock. <laughs>